I want to talk about continuity on piecewise functions. These are uh, kinds of functions that we haven't really talked about yet, but they are uh, probably, hopefully you've seen them before, functions which are defined on uh, more than one piece. I'm referring to something like this. Let's say f of x equals, uh, you do this thing, something like 2x plus 1 if um, x is less than or equal to 2 and minus 2x plus 4 if x is greater than 2, right? This is called a piecewise function because it's got two pieces. Sometimes these are called two branches of the function. Um, but you can still do all the regular stuff that you can do with other functions. Uh, you can plug values in, you can draw the graph, you could talk about whether or not it's continuous, all that kind of a stuff. For instance, uh, what are some of, just some of the values here? What is uh, f of 0? You got to plug 0 in here. First you have to decide which piece to use. So is it uh, less than 2 or greater than 2? It's less than or equal to 2. So you use the first piece. So you go 2 times 0 plus 1. And that is 1. So that's f of 0. What about f of 2? Which piece should I use for f of 2? Well, when x is 2, uh, it actually is 2. So it satisfies the first piece here. And so I'm going to plug into the top formula again. I get 5 this time, right? Or what about f of 3? What is that? Uh, for f of 3, when x is 3, you got to put, I, I should have wrote an x there, if x is greater than 2. You, you put into this one, right? Because 3 is greater than 2. So you get minus 2 times 3 plus 4. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2, right? This is how you plug into a... Uh, piecewise function. No problem. Let's see if we can draw the graph. Okay, draw the graph. Uh, we got two pieces here and uh, just by looking at it, you can tell actually each of these, if it were by itself, would be a line because that's they look like the equation for a line. Um, to draw the graph of this whole function, basically we're going to draw, uh, it's going to look like sort of two pieces of lines and uh, one, the first piece looks like the line 2x plus 1, so maybe I'll just graph that. This is conveniently in the, uh, the old slope and intercept form, so the, uh, the intercept is 1, the slope is 2, so it goes sort of up 2 and over 1, like so. That's the graph of the first one, 2x plus 1. Now this piece is only going to, uh, you know, this graph is only going to look like that, until x equals 2. So actually, I shouldn't have drawn the whole picture. I should have drawn only, uh, well, actually, it really looks like I'm going only to x equals 2, all right? Because beyond this point, for bigger values, it's going to look totally different. It's going to look like this one. What does this one look like? Uh, notice I put the filled in circle here. That's because this is supposed to be x less than or equal to 2. So when x actually equals 2, the value is here, all right? What about this one? Negative 2x plus 4. This one also we can graph. It has the y-intercept of 4 and the slope of negative 2, so it goes down like so. In fact, if you do this right, I think it goes right through 0. It has an x-intercept at x equals 2, and it looks like this. Now, I didn't draw it over here because, remember, this piece is only um, when x is greater than 2 that this piece um, determines what the function values are. And right here, I'm going to put the empty circle. That's because we already said when x actually equals 2, the value should be up here and not down here. All right. When x is greater than 2, though, all of these are the values. Okay, this is what the graph of a piecewise function looks like. It's not all, this is not something we're going to do all that much. I'm not really going to give you a piecewise function to tell you to draw the graph, but but you can. It's not, it's not really hard. You just draw each piece and you kind of make it so that you do one piece on the where it says, and you do the other piece where, where that says. All right, I could ask you things about this function in particular, since we're talking about continuity. Is this function continuous? No, it's not. You can tell pretty simply by looking this uh, is not continuous. Where is the discontinuity? So there's a discontinuity at x equal 2, right? x equal 2 is a place where you have this jump in the graph. And if you wanted to, you could say exactly why is it discontinuous there. It's because the limit from uh, the left is different from the limit from the right. And in particular, it's discontinuous since the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x does not exist. Right? The overall limit as x approaches 2 does not exist because of this, this break in the curve. All right. So the 
this function is not continuous. I don't know if this seems kind of weird to you. It is a little weird to have functions which are defined in two pieces, but actually this happens all the time in the real world. I just want to give you a quick real world example. All right, I was just looking at a website, actually, it's a true story. It said this, the shipping costs, I believe this was on WordPress. They make like, you can get shirt, t-shirts and mugs with weird logos on them or something. Anyway, shipping costs $7 for the first item, $3 for each additional item. I'm sure you've seen things like this before. This actually describes a piecewise kind of a function. So let's try and write an actual function for how much the shipping costs. So let's write, say, C of X. This would be the uh, cost for X items. Why is it gonna be piecewise? It's because actually it's different if you only have one item versus uh, any other number of items. The calculation is different, right? So the, the uh, thing, uh, the function, if you were to write it as a piecewise function would look something like this. It has one piece, which is only uh, when X equals one and that is seven. So this is if X equals one, the cost of shipping is seven, all right? And it's different when X is greater than one. This is actually a little tricky. What is it when X is greater than one? Let's say you have two items, the total will be 10, right? That's because it's seven plus three times that one additional item, uh, which is three, right? So seven, here's the formula, seven plus three times the number of additional items. And what is the number of additional items? Well, X is the total number of items. The number of additional items that is beyond the first one would be X minus one. So for example, how much will it cost to ship five items? You would plug in, sorry, I don't want to erase this, but you would plug in C of five. You use the second piece, you get seven plus three times five minus one, which is four. So that's 12 plus seven is 19. That's how much it costs to ship five items. All right, so piecewise functions, they, they seem a little weird in, a, in a math problems and they're kind of a pain to deal with, but actually they are very common things to encounter in the real world. They are all over the place. Let's talk about how can you tell if a piecewise function is continuous or not. Let's try that out. Let's take a look at this function I want to talk about. Is it continuous or not? Uh, when you look at the graph, you can pretty much tell right away if it's continuous or not, just because you can see the graph, you can see if there's any jumps or whatever. In this case, um, the break or the, the, the different, um, the, in this case, the branching point between these two, uh, these two pieces is at x equals zero. And it says when x is greater or equal to zero, you get x plus one, which is this line. That's easy enough. When x is less than zero, you get three x squared plus one. This looks like a parabola going up and its y-intercept is at one. So actually, it looks like that. This is a kind of a weird uh, shape here, um, but it is continuous, right? These two lines are actually meeting up at the same point there and there's no break in the graph or anything else. All right, so this one is continuous. Uh, you could tell by looking at the picture, but I would like to know how could you tell not by looking at the picture because usually I'm just going to give you the formula and you're not going to be able to see the picture, but I still want to be able to tell is it continuous or not. Um, if you think about it, you know, why did this one end up being continuous? It's because the two pieces, they happen to meet at the same y value at this uh, sort of the branching point where x equals zero. All right. It's because the two pieces they actually met up when x was uh, coming in from this direction and also when x was coming in from this direction. If you think about it a little more technically, what I'm saying is this is continuous. The reason it's continuous is because the limit as x approach zero from the left of f of x is the same as the limit as x approaches zero from the right of f of x. See, from the left, you need to use this curve or it's from the right, you need to use this curve. And the fact that they uh, have the same y value, they approach the same point, means that this is actually gonna be continuous when you try to stick those two pieces together, all right? So this one here, approaching zero from the left side, this means you use, use 
you use the left branch of the piecewise function. And this one, the limit from the right, you use the right branch. Right? What if we didn't know how this was going to turn out? Well, how would you actually find those limits? I can just squeeze that in right here rather than erasing everything. Hope you don't mind. How would you actually find these limits? Well, finding the limit, you know, you just plug in the x value and hopefully everything works out. What is the limit as x goes to 0 from the left? You plug in the value, and I'm going to plug it into this piece because this is the, uh, the left-hand branch of this function, right? This is defined when x is less than 0, so when you're approaching from the left, it should be into this formula that you plug in x equals 0. You get 3 times 0 squared plus 1, and this equals 1, okay? What about the limit from the right of f of x? This one you will plug into this branch because as you approach 0 from the right, that is to say you're using values which are slightly greater than 0, you use this branch. 0 plus 1 equals 1. And because they are the same, that means the two branches actually meet at the same y value, that is y equals 1, and so the whole thing is continuous. All right, uh, let's try one other example where I'm not ever going to show you the picture, but I want to know, is it continuous or not? All right, here's a function in three pieces, actually. I would like to know, is it continuous? It's more specifically, you know, where is it continuous? Right? Tell me exactly where any discontinuities are, if there be any discontinuities. All right? Uh, there are three pieces, right? Uh, each one of those pieces by itself is a nice looking function. This is 0 and 5. Those are just constants. This one is uh, a parabola. It's a polynomial in any case. So each of the three pieces by themselves are continuous, but we need to check if those pieces are actually meeting up at the same points at the various branch points or the points where one piece uh, meets up with the other. So we need to check like I just said, the way that you check that is by checking the one-sided limits. That is, you know, the limit from the left versus the limit from the right. Check the one-sided limits. At the two points where these branches uh, interact with one another, that is x equals 0, which is where the first two branches meet, and x equals 5 is where the, the uh, second two branches meet. And we're going to do these separately. So let's find... The limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f. It's g this time. I don't know why I decided to call it g. What do you say? What is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left? That means the x value is going to be slightly less than 0 as it approaches, so we should use the first branch, and the answer is 0. You plug in x equals 0 to that, but you, you get 0. What about the limit on the right? Limit as x goes to 0 from the right g of x. This means the value is going to be slightly greater than 0, so we should use this branch. Don't go all the way to this branch. That is also to the right, but that's way far away, right? You want just values which are just slightly bigger than 0. That's what this means. So you should use this branch and plug 0 into this branch. I'm plugging x equals 0. I get 0 squared minus 5 times 0, and the answer is 0. They are actually the same. So what's your conclusion? Your conclusion is it is continuous at x equals 0 because the branches on either side are actually meeting up at the same spot. So it is, is it? It is, it is continuous at x equals 0. All right. This is not a discontinuity. It is actually continuous. At that point, let's do the same thing for x equal 5. That's the other point which we are potentially worried about. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. We check. Limit as x goes to 5 from the left of this function. What are we going to plug into? We should plug into this branch because going to 5 from the left means you're choosing x values that are just slightly less than 5. Plug 5 into this branch. You get 5 squared minus 5 times 5. That is 25. That is also 25. So the answer is 0, all right? This is the limit as x approaches 5 from the left. What about the limit as x approaches 5 from the right? 
of g of x. In this case, you use the branch, which includes values slightly bigger than 5, which is this, and the answer is 5. You can see these are not the same, and so the function is not continuous at 5. All right, so what's my final answer? The question was, where is it continuous? It, the answer is, it's continuous everywhere, including even at 0, except x equal 5. So maybe I'll just write my final answer right there. g is continuous everywhere except x equal 5. There you go.